Hi guys, welcome to my Premier League predictions video. In this video, I will be analysing all 20 teams, looking at their transfers, both in and out. I'll be looking at how I feel like they did last year, and I will give an overall opinion about how I feel they will do in the upcoming season. Okay, so first up, we will be looking at 20th, which is Norwich City. I've put Norwich last. Um, I feel like if we look at their uh, transfers this year, they have lost Emanalo Buendia. He's gone to Aston Villa, which not only has they sold to a Premier League club, he was their best player last year in the Championship, so losing him is going to be a big issue. They've obviously lost Alexander Tete. Um, there's quite a few names on that list, as you can see. And they have strengthened a little bit, but I'm not sure they've strength strengthened enough. They've got Rashika from Werder Bremen. They have signed Billy Gilmore on loan from Chelsea. And if anyone saw Scotland in the Euros, you can you saw that he can dominate a midfield. So for Norwich, he might do well if he gets the game time. But I'm going to put Norwich in 20th. Unfortunately, they're going straight back down to the Championship. Okay, so moving on to 19th. In 19th position this year, I have Southampton. Now, they weren't amazing last season, and I only think it's going to get worse this season. Um, if we look at the transfers, they haven't really signed anyone. They've got a few lads on loan from Chelsea, um, including Tino Livramento. Um, actually, I believe that was a permanent deal with a buyback clause, but he was Chelsea's youth player of the season last year, so good, talented right-back. Um, if we look at their outs, that's where I think there's problems. They haven't replaced Danny Ings. They've got Arm they brought Armstrong in, but Danny Ings is obviously their main main man, their main striker. Um, he's gone off to Aston Villa, and they've also signed Ryan Bertrand, um, who has gone to Leicester. So I think Southampton are going to finish 19th. In 18th position, we have Watford. Um, I didn't know much about Watford. I know that they obviously came up free via automatic promotion last year from the Championship. But I don't think they're going to have enough in the Premier League this season. I don't recognise really any of their signings apart from Joshua King. Joshua King's the main man. If he can rekindle his form from Bournemouth a few years ago. Um, obviously he went to Everton and had a really poor time. But if he can play good, they, he might help keep them up. But I can't really see Watford having a great season. And they're going to finish 18th. Moving on to 17th, we have Brentford. I think these are the only team promoted from the Championship that are going to stay up. Um, they've got a really cool new stadium. They've got big man Ivan Tony up front, who will keep them in the Premier League, I reckon, this year. They've made a few signings that I don't really know. They've got Ajer from Celtic, which was quite a good signing. But... Um, just like Watford, I'm not 100% sure on the ins and the outs, as I didn't really follow the championship last year. So I am going to put Brentford in 17th. Up next in 16th, we have Burnley. Now, there's not much to say about Burnley. I think they're a championship team playing in the Prem, but Sean Dyche manages to keep them in the Prem every year. Um, they haven't really signed anyone great. You've got They've had brought Nathan Collins in from Stoke, but... He's a championship player at best. And they've basically cut the squad a lot. So I think Burnley are just going to have another Burnley year and finish 16th in the Premier League. Up next in 15th, we have Crystal Palace. Obviously, they've brought in Patrick Vieira um, to be their manager this year. Not really sure how they're going to do this year. They could do, have a great year. They could have a really poor year. Um, they've brought in a few players this year. This transfer window, they've got Nathaniel Klein's come in. They've brought Mark Guehi off Chelsea, which, again, was a very good Chelsea youth player last season. I think he was on loan at Swansea, and people were pushing for him to push for the first team. They've also signed Conor Gallagher, who did well at West Brom. But I do believe that Palace are going to finish 15th. They're not going to, they're not going to get relegated, but they're not going to push for European football. Up next in 14th, we have Newcastle United. Now, last year they weren't amazing. I think a lot of teams tipped them to go down. But um, they brought in Joe Willock on loan from Arsenal. I think it was in January. And they have, well, I believe at this time of recording, they have made that an official deal. So Joe Willock has come in. They've got rid of a lot of players, as you can see. 
Um, not really any first team players, but they have got rid of a lot off their wage bill. But I do think Newcastle are going to finish 14th. Right, up next we've got Brighton. I think Brighton are going to finish 13th. They have sold quite a few players. As you can see, Matt Ryan's gone to Real Sociedad. The big one, obviously, Ben White going to Arsenal. So they have brought in a bit of money. Um, they've brought in Enoch Muepu from Salzburg. And now he can play alongside Basuma, who, as a centre-mid partnership, could be really good for Brighton this year. I think they've done really well to hold on to uh, Basuma. And they are going to finish around mid-table, but I think 13th. Up next, we have Wolverhampton Wanderers. I think they're going to finish 12th around mid-table. I don't think they've got the squad to push for European football this year. Obviously, the main um, thing about Wolves this season is that Raul Jimenez is back from his head injury. Obviously, he cracked his skull last season and was out for a long time. I think that's why Wolves didn't do that great. But I think he's going to come back, grab a few goals this season and keep them up. And they will finish 12th. In 11th place, we have Everton. Now, Everton haven't really had that great of a window. They've sold Theo Walcott, they've sold Balassi, so they have cut their squad a little bit. But this time last season, we were saying, oh, they brought in Ancelotti and James Rodriguez. This season, they've brought in Rafa Benitez and Andros Townsend. Now, they've also brought in Asmir Begovic and Damari Gray, which are OK signings, but are they really going to push Everton to European football? Probably not. I'm going to say 11th for Everton. Moving on to the top 10 now, the business end of the table, we have West Ham United. Now, last year, they did have a really good season, and a lot of people were pushing them for top four. I think their squad kind of just let them down towards the end of the season. One man that obviously came in was Jesse Lingard. He helped them massively towards the end of the season, but he has gone back on back home to Manchester United. And I think unless West Ham can get Lingard back or someone of his calibre to play in that advanced midfield position, I don't think they're going to do very well this season. I've gone for 10th. And they've also got European football, so I think they are going to struggle this season. I don't think they're going to be that far down the table, but I've gone for 10th position for West Ham. Up in 9th, I've got Leeds. Now, this is the one decision I'm not that confident on. Because Leeds could finish 18th or they could finish 7th if they have a good year. They haven't particularly brought anyone in of note. They've signed Jack Harrison on a permanent deal from Man City. And they've brought in Junior Furpo, I believe it is, from Barcelona. But I think they've just sold him to get him off, them off their wages. They've reduced their squad quite a bit. Obviously, it's quite hard for them. The way they play football, they need quite a fit big squad. So, I have gone for, P, uh, for position 9th for Leeds. But they could finish, like I say, bottom half of the table easily, but ninth for Leeds. In eighth position, I have Arsenal. Now, I believe this is the make or break season for Mikel Arteta at Arsenal Football Club. If you look at their signings, they've brought in Navar Nuno Tavares from Benfica. He's a left back that can fight Kieran Tierney. They've brought in Lukonga, who I don't know much about. I think he's a centre mid. And obviously, they bought Ben White for 50 million. Now, if he's not amazing, that looks like an awful deal from Nicola Arteta and could go against him in the long run. They haven't got European football this season, so you would expect them to be pushing the top half of the top 10. But I think they're going to finish eighth. Aubameyang didn't have a great season last year. Lacazette wasn't amazing. Pepe, they still don't own. they still paying for Pepe. I think Arsenal's chances this year of European football lie in Ben White, Saka and Emil Smith-Rowe and if them three don't have a blinding season Arsenal are going to finish outside the top seven if not more towards the 10th position. In seventh position we have Aston Villa. Now Aston Villa is a tricky one this season. They've obviously sold Jack Grealish to Man City but obviously they brought in a hundred million pounds for that. They have replaced him as I mentioned with Norwich, they brought in Emanilo Buendia. Buendia? Um, Ashley Young they brought in. They brought in Leon Bailey from Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, Axel Twenzebi. And I think most importantly, they brought in Danny Ings. Now, Danny Ings was a very good striker for Southampton last year. And one of the re main reasons why I put Southampton to go down. Villa don't have European football. And I think they have quite a good squad. Obviously, they've lost Grealish. And when he was out of the team last year, they did struggle. But I think they're going to finish 7th, just ahead of Arsenal this year. 
In sixth position, I have Tottenham Hotspur. Now, this is only if Harry Kane stays. I don't think they'll finish sixth if he goes. I'll talk about that later on in the video. But if Harry Kane stays, he they will finish top six. They've also brought in Brian Gill from Sevilla, um, who I believe is an, an OK signing as a young Spanish midfielder. They've released quite a few players. You can see Lamella's, he was in the Brian Gill deal. He went the other way. Johan Voith has gone to Villarreal, I think, on loan again. Joe Hart's gone to Celtic. Uh, Alderweireld has gone to Saudi Arabia, which I think will be a big miss, especially in the changing room. But I do think Spurs have got the squad. Obviously, they've brought the new manager in as well, Nuno Santos. He knows what he's doing in the Premier League. I think they'll finish sixth only if they keep Harry Kane. Right, moving on to the worst position in the league, in my opinion. Just missing out on top four is Leicester City. They're going to do it again. They're going to have a great season, at, but the top four are just going to be too good for them. Just like last season, just like the season before. Um, I think they brought in Dakar from Salzburg, who I think is going to be Jamie Vardy's replacement in the long term. Ryan Bertrand's come in from Southampton, which is a great signing for Ryan Bertrand. Obviously, he's jumped ship at Southampton. I do think they're going to finish fifth. and They might bring in another signing. They might lose uh, James Madison. If they lose James Madison, they might even fall further down the pecking order behind the likes of Spurs, Villa or Arsenal. But fifth position for Leicester City. Up next, we have fourth position, and I'm going for Liverpool. This is all... Liverpool can have an amazing season and win the league. But I don't think that's going to happen again this year. There was a lot of... Like trouble in the camp last year with Allison's, uh, I think it was his mum that passed away, unfortunately. Van Dyke's big injury. There's quite a few injuries in the squad, and they've only brought in Kunate this year. They've released quite a few players. I think Joy Gigi uh, Wijnaldum left on a free, which isn't the best. Harry Wilson's gone out on loan again. They haven't really got rid of many first team players, so there's a lot of players in that squad that are just lingering about. I think Shakiri's going to go on a free or could be sold to, uh, I believe I read, the Bundesliga. But I do think Liverpool are going to struggle this season, especially with their forward line. And they need to bring someone in to replace Salah and Mane, simply because the African Cup of Nations will happen in early 2022. So they're going to lose them for a month or so. Can Origi and Oxlade-Chamberlain really do that deal? Obviously, they've got Jota, who I believe is going to have to have a great season to keep Liverpool in the title race but I do think they're going to fall short and finish fourth. In third position, I'm going with one of the teams from Manchester, and I'm going with Manchester United. I think they've strengthened very, very well. The uh, Varane deal is just about to go through. Jadon Sancho was obviously a very good sign-in. I think they're going to push for the league this year. I think it's going to be a three-way title fight. They've still got Jesse Lingard around the squad. They could sell him. They've still got um, quite a good squad. Obviously, they've kept hold of Pogba. If Bruno has a good year, he might be able to help them get further on. I think the back four of Shaw, Maguire, Varane and, and Van Bissaka is going to really, really help this year. But, and the only reason I don't think they're going to scrape and even get into the top two is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I don't think he's a good enough manager to win the Premier League. I might be proven wrong by the end of the year. But I don't think he's tactically good enough. He's basic, I feel like he's basically letting the players run the team. And if they had a great manager come in, like like Carlo Ancelotti, or obviously when Jose Mourinho was there, wasn't, it didn't go great, but they still won the Europa League. I just think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is his make or break season, the same as Mikel Arteta. If he doesn't win silverware, I think he's out of the door. Third place for Manchester United. In second position, and just falling short of the league this year, Subject to one transfer, which I said I'll talk about. I've gone for Manchester City. The main reason I don't think they're going to win the league this year is because they haven't signed the striker. Sergio Aguero has obviously gone to Barcelona, and I don't think Jesus is quite good enough to lead the line for City all season. They've obviously made the massive sign of Jack Grealish for £100 million. But is that not just an embarrass embarrassment of riches? They've got Mares, Bernardo Silva, Sterling, Foden, now Grealish. Can Pep Guardiola manage to use that team to the best that they can? They might need as well, they might need another midfielder like Fernandinho and Rodri. Are they good enough to play a whole season? Obviously they have, you can literally get 
two stock great starting 11s with that Man City squad. Um, I, but I do think this season they're going to fall short in the Prem and they're going to go f- as much as they can for the Champions League. They're going to use their set, their weaker team in the Prem and try to win in Europe. Obviously falling short to Chelsea last year. I do think City are going to just finish behind number one in second. And the champions this year, I believe, will be my team, Chelsea. Now, the only reason I believe that is because of the new signing, Romelu Lukaku. I think he's going to push for the golden boot this year. I think, obviously, we got mentally, we're ahead of City. We beat him in the Champions League at the end of last season. We're the Super Cup holders as well. We've got an amazing squad. We've got youth coming through. I think Mason Mount's going to have another great year. Havertz has got a lot more confidence. Werner's going to hit some goals this year. I do think Chelsea are going to win the league. We've managed to get rid of a lot of players off our wage list as well. We've managed to sell Tomori. Billy Gilmore's gone out on loan. Giroud's gone to Milan. Uh, Mark Gehi has gone to Palace, as I mentioned earlier. Conor Gallagher's gone out on loan. Livermento has been sold. Bourgeois has gone to Southampton as well. We have signed Marcus Bettinelli in replace for Willy Caballero, which doesn't really make much of a difference because they're not, probably not going to play. We had, do have Kepa and Mendy that will well, rotate probably. I think Kepa will probably be the cup captain. I also think we're going to win the FA Cup this year. I think we're going to do the double. I think Thomas Tuchel... He's a great manager and he is the perfect man in charge of this squad. And Chelsea are going to win the Premier League. The big thing about this season is Harry Kane. He, last season he was the top goal scorer and he won the Playmaker Award. And he's linked to a move to Manchester City. Now, if this big money move goes through, I can't see anybody sit stopping Manchester City. Harry Kane will win them the league. And... No one's going to be close. They'll finish 15, 20 points clear. But if it doesn't go through, like I said, Chelsea will win the league. If it does go through, I think that City will win the league. But I also believe Spurs won't finish in a European spot. I think Spurs will finish 8th. Villa and Arsenal will move up. And obviously, like I said, Chelsea and City will swap round. Chelsea will come second. City will win the league. But that's only if Manchester City sign Harry Kane. Whilst we're talking about Harry Kane, let's move on to the Golden Boot. He obviously has won it quite a few times. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's three times he's won the Golden Boot. I think it'll be out of him and Romelu Lukaku this year. I think if Chelsea win the league and Kane stays at Spurs, I think Lukaku will win the Golden Boot. If Harry Kane goes to Man City, I can't see anyone holding Harry Kane back. Golden Glove this year, I think again will be out of Man City and Chelsea. I think if Chelsea win the league, it'll be Mendy. If City win the league, it'll be Edison. So I will be going for Mendy this year. Thanks for watching, guys. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy it. And I will see you in the next one.